Hi, I'm Susie and I have PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome. And here's my daily routine and the things I do to help manage my symptoms in a very unfiltered, unedited vlog. This one's a bit different for me, but I hope you guys like it. My PCOS morning routine is starting at 6.30 a.m., which trust me, is not a typical occasion. Every morning I wake up feeling fresh as a daisy. I always make sure to chug my H2O in the morning, like one of those aesthetic influencers, minus the aesthetic part. And then it's time to get ready for Pilates, which I only had 10 minutes to get ready for because I snooze my alarm five times. Ooh, outfit of the day. Deodorant, a very essential step for a sweaty girl like me. And some violent toothbrushing, so my Pilates instructor doesn't smell my stank breath from across the room. Now, typically for my PCOS, I like to have breakfast first thing in the morning, but I was running late for Pilates, so breakfast will have to wait. My exercise of choice is Pilates. There isn't one type of exercise that's the best for PCOS, but what's important is that you don't overdo it because studies have found that that can raise your stress hormone, cortisol, causing your symptoms to worsen. Look at me with my scientific research. I definitely would have preferred doing this session after breakfast, but the endorphins kicked in afterwards and I was riding that high. Good morning, guys. I finally joined the Stanley Cup Nation and got myself one. I'm very happy about it. But I usually try to have a savory breakfast every morning, but if I can't wait for the savory breakfast because I'm ravishing like I am right now, I am gonna make a little Greek yogurt bowl because Greek yogurt has lots of protein in it. This is like first breakfast. <laughs> Ingredients, Greek yogurt, chia seeds, almonds, more seeds, cinnamon, which is apparently good for PCOS. I add a little bit of honey because I can't have my Greek yogurt unsweetened and apple. I also try to have my breakfast before I have my morning coffee because my coffee has oat milk in it and I know that that does have sugar in it and I've heard that it's not the best to have your coffee before your breakfast even though I would love to have my coffee before my breakfast. And I'm actually running low on groceries right now so I'm probably gonna have to do a little grocery shop. You could put the almonds in whole. I chopped them up because I feel like they're a little bit big. I was gonna make it pretty, but I'm starving, so I'll just do what I normally do and stir it up. And then with my breakfast, I'm gonna have my Inositol. I have this one from Inositol Australia. I just got it online, but I actually bought the first one and then they kindly sent me a refill. It's for PCOS, fertility, or insulin resistance. Sometimes I just put this straight into my bowl or I'll have it with water. I do notice a difference in my PCOS symptoms when I take this. I get very bloated and uncomfortable and like IBS symptoms when I have a PCOS flare up and I find that they are so much better and I don't get them as much when I take this. And also my sugar cravings are so much better. It tastes like you're putting a teaspoon of sugar in water. It's a different strain of sugar or something. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. She's not purdy, but it tastes good. And then after I finish this, I finally can have my iced latte and oat milk. But my coffee machine, something is wrong with it. It keeps on making the coffee taste like dirt. Disgusting. I think I'm gonna cop it today and go and get a yummy iced latte from a cafe because I am not feeling like dirt coffee this morning. Another supplement is fish oil tablets. I don't know if I notice a difference per se, and it does kind of make your burp smell like fish, which is not the nicest, but I do try to take a couple of these in the morning. I almost forgot, but there is another supplement I take, vitamin D, but I actually haven't been taking it because I lost this and I just found it. I shoved it in the bathroom somewhere. They look like a rabbit poo, or you could look at it as like a chocolate raisin. One of these, in the morning. Let's go get a coffee. Iced latte is acquired and she is stunning. Mm, they do such a good time. They do such a good time. They do such a good job every time there. Now, I was gonna go for a grocery shop, but I actually have a doctor's appointment because I have a UTI again. Yay! I swear I do everything to prevent them and they still keep coming back. They can't get enough of me. I am back. I've got my UTI antibiotics and I cannot believe what that lady just asked me to do. 
Usually I go in, I say I have a UTI and they're like, okay, here you go, antibiotics. But I told her I have a UTI and she was like, here, pee in this cup. And I was like, right now? This minute? And then I went and I managed to squeeze one out and literally handed it to her while it was still warm. And it turns out I do have a UTI, so I got my antibiotic. But I also grabbed some groceries, parsley. I'm gonna plant this in the garden. Spinach, low carb bread, apple cider vinegar, mushrooms, tomatoes, avocado, and fake bacon. For my PCOS savory breakfast, I always like to have some form of eggs, veggies, and low carb bread. Or sometimes I don't have the low carb bread because some of the low carb bread is nasty. I got these little egg cups from H&M Home. They're so cute and I want to use them. So we're going to make little dippy eggs. A little switch Murray and I made lately because we watched this documentary on the nonstick pans about how bad they actually are for your health and apparently really bad for hormone health. So we've got some stainless steel pans now. I'm not gonna lie, my UTI is making me feel very unwell today. I just had to take some Panadol, but I'm pushing through. But yes, this is a high protein, low carb, with healthy fats breakfast. PCOS friendly. I have forgotten how to boil eggs. Two eggs. Oh, also just ignore the tomato sauce that is sitting on the coffee machine. This was Murray's decoration. I know people are gonna think I'm gross for this, but I hardly ever wash my vegetables and I'm gonna be the first one to admit that. I have heard that having a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with water a day, not straight, is supposed to be good for improving insulin resistance and good for PCOS. It tastes like the devil's piss, but I'm gonna do it just for funsies. I'm gonna start doing it again. It's actually not that bad. Oh, gets you at the back of the front. <coughs> My tummy feels a bit funny, is that normal? <gasps> it's not that bad. I also always like to cook with extra virgin olive oil. So I'm gonna put some olive oil in the pan. Slippery bastard. Oops. Pepper, salt, paprika. Oh my God, I completely forgot about the fake bacon. Oh my God, okay. We're not having fake bacon today. And then I'm just gonna put the spinach on top to like steam it. And that is our delicious PCOS friendly meal. Oh no, oh no, I cooked them for too long. Oh my God, I forgot to put the parsley on. Now that is gourmet. This just brings me back to childhood. My dad used to make me boiled eggs with soldiers all the time. And now for my favorite snack of the day, Ural, AKA UTI medication. Ural should sponsor me at this point. This is cranberry flavor. Mmm, so good. We're gonna do one of my favorite PCOS activities, which is removing my mustache. You can't really see it. Honestly, she isn't that bad, but I've had a mustache ever since I was 12, but usually I'll keep on plucking it or shaving it, but I can't find my face razors. So I guess for your entertainment, I'm gonna wax it. I haven't done this in so long and I'm kind of scared. Oh, owie. Oh no. She's looking a bit irritated. Oh, well, we've come this far. I need to do the other side now. Oh, there was some thick ones in there. You didn't ask for it, but I'm giving you a close up. That actually worked really well though, but I'm kind of scared that my top lip is going to go bright red in a second. Murray's definitely been feeling that tickle him when he kisses me. Oh God, I shouldn't have done that. My, my lip is so red. Hi guys, so fun, but actually not so fun fact. My UTI ended up getting so bad after I filmed that video that I was catatonic in bed for a couple of days after that. But luckily I had gotten those antibiotics because I do not think I would have been okay without them. It seemed to go away and it was all right. But next time I get a 
a UTI, I'm getting antibiotics the second it happens. On a more exciting note, I have a little haul for you guys. I found this brand called Parade, which is woman owned by the way. And they have a heap of cute, comfortable looking bras and undies, plus apparel as well. One of the main things that caught my eye about them is they are so inclusive. Parade are kindly sponsoring this portion of the video, but I am so, so happy with all of these pieces. This top I'm wearing right now is actually their 24 seven vintage fit tee in the shade midnight. Sometimes I get tops like this and they're so tight. I don't want to put them on because I feel like I'm getting restricted, but this is literally the stretchiest, like airiest, softest fabric. And I'm definitely gonna get this in like every single color because it is just so comfortable and goes with everything and also a very cute fit. Next is these undies, which are seamless, but they actually are seamless. Not like other undies you get and you can still see the line of your undies. Was wearing them for hours and they were so comfy. Didn't feel like I was wearing anything. And it also didn't like start riding up my crevices like I find with a lot of seamless undies. So these are the Invisible Sculpt Hip Hugger in the shade Submarine. This bra here is called the Dream Fund Bra Ultra Soft in the color Vine. And the Dream Comfort Brief Ultra Soft in Vine as well. I also like that the undies have the little mesh bit. I'm just gonna put it on to show you guys what it looks like. So this is the undies and the bra on. Mostly full, but a little bit cheeky coverage at the back. I could sleep in this. Literally, it is that comfy, but the straps are so thick and supportive. They go all the way from a size A to a G, which is amazing. And also for the bottoms, they go from an extra small to a 5XL. I wanted to try a non-underwire version as well. So this is the Dream Fit Plunge Bralette. And I wanted to try the high rise briefs as well. So the Dream Fit high rise brief in lavender. I absolutely love the color. And I also think that this is such a comfy bralette. And also love that this is double lined as well for a bit more coverage. I think I am obsessed with the high rise briefs. I think they're so cute, like a little vintagey kind of moment, but also full coverage. And the fact that they're so affordable, so these are the sweat wicking workout briefs. If you're a sweaty girl like me, shoved this right in my cart when I saw that. But these are also seam free, so perfect to go under your workout leggings. And this fabric is just amazing. I did get a few other things, but I wanted to show you guys my absolute favorite items. They've been kind enough to give us a code for 50% off. So you can use code Susie50 for 50% off parade. I'll also have a link in the description box to shop. And that is 50% off, not just a couple of pieces, the entire website. I'm on the couch and I've got an energy drink. We are finishing off this video with a PCOS Q&A. I was curious to see how many of you would have questions about PCOS, so I put a little Q&A thing for PCOS on my Instagram story. Do all of you just have PCOS or something? Because there were so many questions. PCOS sisters or PCOS siblings, because not just girls have ovaries. Remember that, guys. But thank you so much to everyone who sent in a question. Also, before I get into this, I think I should probably let you guys know Know that I'm obviously not a scientist. I'm not a professional, a medical practitioner, none of that. I've done a lot of research on PCOS because I have it, but please, before taking any of my advice, go to a doctor and I do recommend if you think that maybe you could have PCOS, try and get a diagnosis. It's not something that you can really self-diagnose. It is recommended that you go and get a diagnosis. I could be wrong in some of the things I'm saying. I'm just basing everything that I'm saying off of the research I've done on Google and scientific reports I've seen online, which mostly are reputable sources, but you never know when it comes to the internet and also based off things that doctors have told me. So yeah, disclaimer finished, let's get back to the Q&A. One of my favorite questions I received is what is VAG? 
honestly, I appreciate you for just interacting on my Instagram story. <laughs> this is a good straight to the point definition, but polycystic ovary syndrome, also known as PCOS, is a common health problem caused by an imbalance of reproductive hormones. Some of the symptoms are missed periods, irregular periods, or very light periods, ovaries that are large and have many cysts, excess body hair, including chest, stomach, back, weight gain, especially around the belly, abdomen, acne or oily skin, male pattern baldness or thinning hair, and infertility. You do not have to have all of the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome to have it. If I have a period every month, could I have PCOS? My doctor said nah, but I don't know. I just am imagining your doctor being like, nah. <laughs> Although it is very common for people with PCOS to have irregular periods or no periods at all, you can have PCOS and still have regular periods. If your cyst dissolved doesn't mean you don't have PCOS anymore. I wish it worked that way, but unfortunately, not everyone with PCOS has cysts, by the way. No, you cannot cure PCOS. You have it for the rest of your life. There is things you can do to manage the symptoms. You can take medication prescribed by your doctor. There are ways that you can manage it with diet and lifestyle choices. You need to keep on making these lifestyle changes and continue to be looking after it your whole life which is super fun. <laughs> How was your diagnosis journey? Did it take long? P.S. Love your videos. Thank you so much. Basically, I had irregular periods all throughout high school. I got my period super late. I think I would have been about 15 or 16 when I got my period and it was very irregular. I'm talking like once a year, once every few months and I would have super long, heavy periods or sometimes I would have spotting for like weeks on end. So eventually I I went to the doctor to get this checked out and she was actually feeling around my stomach area and pressed down on like my lower abdomen near where my ovaries are and I just had this shooting pain and I was like ow oh my god what was that and she was like oh does that hurt there like she was just pressing down lightly and it hurt really bad and she was like okay I think we should send you in to get an ultrasound so I ended up getting an ultrasound done an outside of the stomach ultrasound ultrasound, not an internal ultrasound, and they found cysts on my ovaries. I also remember that I did end up getting a blood test and it set off red flags for my doctor because she realized that my testosterone was really high. Went back to the doctor and she diagnosed me with PCOS. Luckily, I had a very quick diagnosis experience. I didn't know what PCOS was and my doctor spotted it out for me, which I know I'm very lucky because there are so many doctors that have no idea when it comes to PCOS. I will say that the ultrasound was a horrible experience because they make you drink like a liter of water and then hold on to your pee for an hour. It's basically like when you get an ultrasound when you're pregnant. Imagine that. And I'm looking at this photo of my ovaries while she's pressing down on my busting bladder. I was screeching in pain because I needed to pee that bad. I think I would have been 16 when I was diagnosed or 17. Don't quote me on that because I have a terrible memory, but I definitely was still a teenager, a late teenager when I got diagnosed. How do doctors check if you have PCOS? Like, do they look at your PP? I'm a bit anxious. <laughs> They don't have to look at your PP, definitely not. They did an ultrasound for me, which is basically just where they go with the machine over your stomach and over your ovaries. So you do have to like pull down your pants a little bit, but they definitely do not have to look at your downstairs area. But commonly the way to get diagnosed is an ultrasound on your ovaries to see if you have ovarian cysts or the blood test, which checks your testosterone levels. And then what did your doctor recommend? Mine said I should just take the pill again. So I remember at the time my doctor did just recommend the pill and also the dreaded you should lose weight, which seems to be doctor's solutions for every single problem that I have in my life. It's always eat healthier, lose some weight. And I actually didn't go on birth control for ages. I just kind of left it for a long time because I didn't want to go on the pill first of all. And I also didn't mind at that point the fact that I wasn't having periods, but eventually I did end up going on the pill and I still am on the pill to this day because I got a boyfriend. So I needed to be careful, you know? 
Which brings me on to the next question. Are you on birth control or are you managing through diet and lifestyle? I am on the birth control pill for contraception reasons. It's only been in like the last couple of years that I've started to make some lifestyle and diet changes, fitness changes to try and help my PCOS symptoms because for a long time there, I still would get irregular periods and really bad PCOS symptoms even being on the pill. But the two times I've tried going off the pill in the past, I just did not get a period. I have not tried going off the pill in a long time. Like this was more than two years ago, the last time I tried going off it. So I think maybe with my current lifestyle changes, it might be different this time trying to go off it. Also for the doctor recommending question, I just remembered my doctor also did recommend that I could take metmorphin, which is a diabetes medication that some people take for PCOS to improve insulin resistance and hormone imbalances. What were your symptoms and have they really improved after a change in diet? God, I had a lot of symptoms, which for a long time, I didn't realize that these things were PCOS, but I guess the big one was irregular periods, facial hair, black thick chin hairs, that one's really fun. Sugar cravings is a big symptom for me. I also have struggled with my weight and gaining weight very rapidly my whole life. I've fluctuated a lot throughout the years. I definitely struggled with my weight and body image in the past, but losing weight is definitely not a big priority for me anymore. And I focus more on my health and not focus on my appearance and what I look like on the outside. Mood swings and feeling very lethargic and fatigued for me as well. I also experience pain in my lower abdomen, my ovary area and bloating a lot as well, which can be caused by foods that flare it up. And TMI, but another symptom for me is like the bloating and the IBS kind of issues, which I had so many doctors tell me it wasn't linked, but I just, I know for a fact that it is linked because I can tell when my PCOS is flaring up. And yes, changing my diet has definitely helped my PCOS symptoms. I notice if I fall off of eating my low carb meal in the morning, my high protein and taking my supplements, I instantly feel my symptoms getting worse. Cutting down on my sugar and my carbs has been a big one, a big helper for me, which is unfortunate because I love carbs and I love sugar. What supplements do you take? I'm gonna quickly run through and say them again. I did show you guys earlier. Inositol, the big one. This is from Inositol Australia. I also take fish oil, vitamin D3. I mean, this is a supplement I take. It's not to do with PCOS, but I take cranberry tablets from URL so I don't get UTIs as often. And I take iron supplements. How do Australian doctors respond to your symptoms? I've had poor experiences here in the US. I've seen a bunch of different doctors and there are so many that have no idea what they're talking about with PCOS and basically just tell you to lose weight. Unfortunately, it's a real struggle trying to find someone who actually knows what they're talking about. So that's why I mostly just do a lot of research online. But yes, please don't be discouraged because there are so many doctors that just don't know what they're talking about. So if you go to someone and you feel unsatisfied with the answers they give you, or you feel like they're just brushing off your symptoms, then if you financially have the capability, I do recommend going to another doctor and trying to get someone else's opinion. Another person asked, does PCOS make you feel emotionally unstable? But I definitely do feel that my mood can change at the drop of a hat. But that also could be something to do like with my ADHD or also I struggle with mental health issues like anxiety and depression. So that could be that that's causing my mood swings. I mean, there's many things that could be the cause of that. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint where that's coming from, but I do personally feel the mood swings and I think that that is a symptom of PCOS as well. Bloating is a massive issue for me as a PCOS girly. Any tips to prevent this? Me too, sis. So I would say just finding the foods that trigger that bloating. 
For me personally, I know dairy can trigger me to bloat really badly. Also, if I'm having too much gluten or high carb foods like pasta and bread, but I really think it depends on your certain intolerances and like what can set it off for you. I also think the inositol supplement helps a lot with the bloating for me. I find if I stop taking this, I bloat a lot more. Do you crave sugar a lot? I feel like I need a little something sweet after every meal. It's bad. I was a sugar fiend. I craved sugar so much. Like Murray and I after dinner would always go and get a chocolate bar and some lollies as well because I wanted the mixture of both. And we would do that every night for like a very unhealthy amount of time. These days, since doing like all of my diet and lifestyle changes, I find I hardly crave sugar anymore, which is crazy. I think it's also since I've cut down on sugar, sugar is addictive. So like the less you have it, the less you crave it. I think the inositol also helps my sugar cravings. Like this stuff is amazing. Get on the inositol if you haven't already. What's the best diet for PCOS? IF, GF, DF, low carb. I don't even know what all of those are. There is not one specific diet that I feel like is good for everyone with PCOS. I think it depends on the person, which I feel like I'm very annoying for saying that so many times. But personally for me, having higher protein meals and lower carb meals has helped a lot. I feel like the Mediterranean diet is a really good one. And also it's not as restrictive as like other diets. I hate diets because I've tried so many crash diets or fad diets when I was a teenager that like even the word diet, I'm like, ugh. I would say don't try a specific diet. Try and make little changes in your current diet. Do you struggle with insulin resistance alongside PCOS? I haven't specifically gotten the test for insulin resistance, but I have gotten blood tests before that have told me that my insulin was high. So I do highly suspect that I do have insulin resistance. I did recently get a blood test though, and since making the switches in my diet, my insulin has gone back to a normal level, which is super good. How do you notice when it's bad or flaring up? I get two chin hairs every time it's flaring up. These chin hairs, they go dormant when my PCOS is doing well and when I'm sticking to my PCOS routine. And the second I go off of it and I start getting bloated, my symptoms start coming back, my period like just comes out of nowhere, I will wake up with two black chin hairs and they're like fully grown already. They just like, they come out and they're like, your PCOS is flaring up, do something about it. I also get a lot of brain fog and I feel super fatigued and lethargic. Like, especially when I wake up first thing in the morning, I feel like I'm sick or like I've been hit by a truck. Does it affect fertility? Does it worry you if you want kids? So PCOS definitely can affect fertility. However, Murray and I are not looking at having a child anytime soon. So I'm not really worried about it. I'm not nearly at a point in my life where I'm even thinking about kids. I love my baby nieces and nephew and they are enough for me. I do know that you can go to the doctor and get treatments to help with your fertility for PCOS though, but it can take longer to get pregnant and cause infertility, unfortunately. But that's a battle we'll fight when it comes in the very far, far future. I can hardly look after myself. I can't look after a kid. How do I tame the facial hairs? I'm so insecure about it. Please don't be insecure about them. Susie has a mustache and chin hairs and back hairs. Thank you for the input, Murray. Speaking of, look at the flowers that Murray. Speaking of, look at the cute flowers that Murray came home with for me today. So yes, as Murray was telling you, I do struggle with the facial hairs and everything. For a long time, I just plucked, but for the most part, I shave my upper lip and I also use like the IPL at home laser device on it. How do you deal with the mental health symptoms? If you have any, love from Canada. I actually recently started seeing a psychologist for the mental health symptoms, which I has been helping. I've only seen her a few times though, so I'm not too sure yet. But I think just trying to manage stress, which I hate when people say, manage your stress. It's like, well, I'm stressed. How am I supposed to manage being stressed when I'm already stressed? 
I recently adopted a new hobby of gardening though, which has helped with my stress and I've been very excited about that. I think hobbies are a really good one for managing your stress and mental health. Gardening has definitely been a hyper fixation of mine recently, but hopefully I stick to it. I've spent enough money on it so far that I'm really hoping I stick to it. But soon, hopefully we'll have a veggie garden. Also getting the right amount of sleep, which is so hard for me. I really struggle with my sleep schedule. I will lie awake at night for hours trying to get to sleep, but I know that my mental health is so much better when I am getting a regular sleep schedule and making sure to get enough sleep as well. And working out and exercising is just absolutely amazing for mental health. And I feel so much better when I'm sticking to working out. And I think I'm going to end the PCOS Q&A there because I've been sitting here for like two hours now. This is why I can't do Q&As because I go on tangents and I watch them back and I'm like, what was I even talking about? That had nothing to do with the original question. What happened to the original plot? But I hope some of my answers helped you guys and thank you so much again to everyone who sent in questions. If you're dealing with PCOS, I hope this video helped a little bit or at least made you feel less alone. And if you feel like maybe you could have PCOS, I definitely recommend going to a doctor and getting it checked out. And if you don't have PCOS, I just appreciate you for being here. Mwah. I appreciate you all for being here. This was a very different kind of video for me, so let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video. If you want more PCOS videos in the future, or if you have any video suggestions, put them down in the comments. And I have fact checked myself, but if I said anything about PCOS that actually is untrue, I'm so happy for you to put it down in the comments below and let me know. Oh, one more question that I forgot to answer is favorite PCOS influencers. So I have three from TikTok and first is PCOS.weight.loss, ignoring the name. She's a PCOS dietitian and I think she has a lot of good information on her TikTok about PCOS and also some good food tips, health tips. Next is at Zoe Antonia underscore on TikTok as well. She has a lot of videos on PCOS and she has some really good recipes on there. And Kaylee Eats or Kaylee Fisher is her name on TikTok as well, has a bunch of good PCOS recipes. I also recommend watching Abby Sharp's video that she did on PCOS. I got a lot of my supplement ideas from that video. So I'll put that up on the screen. And if you like a podcast, the PCOS Nutritionist podcast by Claire Goodwin on Spotify is also a really good podcast. I listened to that for a while. But yeah, those are all my recommendations for PCOS. And that is my PCOS healthy routine, things I do to manage it as a gal with cysts on her ovaries. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It helps me out a lot. And also subscribe if you haven't already and join our family of all shapes and sizes and all shapes of ovaries. And not ovaries, any reproductive system. You are welcome here. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.